All right, welcome to Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. I'm going to talk about this wave. This was the wave that I talked about this time last week. I wanted to focus on it because I thought this was the one wave, the first one all season that I thought had a chance to not only get into the Caribbean and to develop, and that's why I start focus on the, this last week. Um, I'm going to discuss why I think this is going to be a hurricane. I think it's a very good chance of that. Why odds are against and, and largely against a U.S. impact. However, I'm going to show you how there could be a U.S. landfall. It's not out of the question. It may be a small chance. Right now, it looks like a small possibility, but we're early on. I want to get a drink of water there. All right, this is the tropical wave uh, that we're looking at here. Here it is. It, you know, listen, it's it, it's embedded within the ITCZ here. So it's continued to have a nice robust area of clouds on the infrared satellite picture, but look how far south it is. I mean, this is 15 degrees north. The preponderance of waves this year were this far north. And by the time they got this far north, there's been so much westerly winds, everything's curved out to sea. I guess Aaron got the closest right up besides the homegrown development and, and hybrid systems here. But for the most part, these waves have not come anywhere near the United States. The only close ones have been Aaron and that's it. Everything's been homegrown. Um, but uh, this wave's different. It's very far south. Now, um, let me show you why I do think that this is going to be able to survive and uh, become a hurricane all, all week. And if you follow me on the forecast feed and also on the AccuWeather Network, I've talked about all the uh, obstacles. And one of the main obstacles is how far south this is. Um, Let's take a look at the European. I, I, I want to take a look at the European because the European is the one that is uh, the farthest south here. And this is it right here. You see this right in here? Let me go camera full so you can see the whole thing. So, yeah, I guess you can still see it. So this is it. And this is, uh, let's go back. This is on Sunday. And this is it right in, well, let me, let me take you into, there it is, right here. So this is Monday morning. This is it, pretty far, pretty far south. Now, I will say the ensemble members are farther north with this. It's pretty weak, but it's pretty far south. Um, and, and my concern all along is, is that you've got this big continent called South America, that it would get so far south that that would limit it or could shred it. I guess that is still a possibility. None of the modeling shows that. But that is still a concern that it's so far south that it would have an impact on it. But if you follow it along, and l l let's follow it along, there it is on Tuesday. There it is on Wednesday. We'll stop it right here. Here it is Wednesday right in here. And you can see w when you play it forward, it's getting a little better organized. You start seeing some yellows. And then by Wednesday night and Thursday, you see there it gets going here. You see how it does that? as you get into the latter half of the week. Now, some of the modeling is different, but the idea is, as it gets into the Caribbean, and no matter what you look at, and I'll show you the American model as well, and the uh, Google, the the AI and Google uh, models, they all have it down in here at some point Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, you know, we water, I mean, look at these water temperatures. L let me show you that really quick. Um, look at the water temperatures here. I mean, these are the anomalies. These are the anomalies. I mean, that's very warm water here, middle to upper 80s in here. So you've got a ton of warm water here, the anomalies. Okay, I'm not worried that much about dry air. Uh, what, does the, uh, what does the wind shear look like in this area? Well, here it is on Wednesday. Let me mark it with an X. It's right here. Uh, even Tuesday, if you want to look at it on Tuesday, where is it? It's right in here. So it's basically in this box. What does the uh, wind shear look like? I, I like looking at 200 millibar. And I mean, look at it. it, it you've got, it, it, it's over an upper high with warm water right in here. I mean, that ought to explode. That's why I feel pretty good. If there's anything left of it, and it looks like more and more there is, that this will explode into a hurricane. And it could be a very, it, likely a major in this area, that's always a little difficult, but with all that warm water and underneath the 200 millibar high, this thing may really go to town. And, and then now the question is, is where is it going? All right, now I mentioned 
point number two, that a U.S. landfall, odds are against a U.S. landfall at this point. There's no question about it. Let me, let me show you some of the modeling here. We'll, let's just, and I can tell you this, most of the ensembles, most of the, the AI models are all doing what the GFS is doing. Now, is that right? We'll see, but l let's let's take a look at it. And then I'll explain why they're doing what they're doing. All right. So th this is the this is the GFS. Here we go. This is Tuesday, and you can see it right in here. Sorry, I'm trying to turn on my pen. Uh, here we go, right in here. There it is. It's right here. So watch this area as we go forward here. So that's the area to watch. This is the American model. Let's just play it out uh, as we go through. There's Wednesday. Thursday, and then boom. Now, this would be a huge problem for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. I mean, there, there's the American model. Now, what it's doing is there's a trough coming off the East Coast. This is the trough coming across the East Coast as we had in the Tuesday and the Wednesday. Sorry about that. I keep trying to get to my pen. It's this trough coming off Tuesday and Wednesday, and you get this dip in the jet stream, and what it's going to do is it pulls it northward. It'll just pull it like that. That's what it's doing. That's the first of many troughs coming off the East Coast. But the European, the GFS, and a lot of the Google, uh, the, the uh, AI models do that. All right, first trough picks it up, steers it out, and it is gone. Now, you notice where it, it has it located, the, the, Euro, the GFS, on Wednesday, right at around 15 degrees north. This is the 15 degrees north, right in here. You'll note what the Europeans a little different. It's a lot farther south. It's, it's south of 15 and weaker. So the European is a little different. The European does this, and you'll see the difference. This is uh, Thursday evening here. American, Europe, American European, American, and, and this is it down in here. Watch what the European does. It keeps it down in there. There's the European Friday, and there's the GFS way over here. What happened? Why did it do that? Why is the European not taking it to the north because the European is just far enough to the south and weaker and far enough, far enough to the east during the middle, uh, to the east middle part of the week. It misses the connection with this trough. So it misses it. So it doesn't pick it up. That's the difference. That's trough number one. So the European says, nope, I'm missing that trough. So guess what I do? Unlike the GFS, which was farther north and stronger, that takes it out. The European's a little farther south, and watch what it does. It keeps taking it away to the west. You see that? So it missed the first connection. But see, we have another trough coming down. You see that? And, and the GFS shows it too. Another trough coming. You see that as we get into the weekend. European's a little stronger with it. There's the second trough that's coming in. This is the second opportunity, the second opportunity for the trough coming along the United States to pick this up and steer it away from the United States. This is chance number two, all right? And the Europeans suggest, there it goes, picks it up. Now, interesting enough, though, it does leave it behind. It says, well, yeah, it's strong enough but not quite strong enough, it leaves it behind, and then you have a problem because you've got a trough back here, ridge building here, the wind, the, the steering flow, which was out of the west-southwest, guess what that's going to do? It's going to turn, and then you're pulling it back toward the United States. That's a possibility. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this scenario is it's, it's going near land here in Hispaniola, and that could weaken it, but that's what the Europeans suggest. In in which case, then you could have a problem, because it picks it, it misses it, it misses the connection, and then here's the last trough, the third trough. Now, I want you to just for a second wipe this out here. Look at what's going on here. If you have this, and imagine instead of this storm being picked up by this trough which is over here. Let's say it misses that connection and you're down in here, all right? You're down in here. What would end up happening is you'd have something like this, right? And all of a sudden you've got this in here. Now you have a problem. 
Because if it's left behind, and again, no model is saying that, but I'm trying to look between it. If it's left behind and you're down here with this system because you missed trough number two, then you've got a trough axis here, ridge axis here, and then all of a sudden you have a pathway toward the United States. And it would be Florida. You've got to thread the needle on it, but you, you see what I mean? That's how it would get to the United States. And, and the other the other way is perhaps what the European also is suggesting is that trough number two does pick it up, but it's not strong enough to pick it up altogether. Then you have this, this, and then it's coming back toward the east coast of Florida. And then because of this trough, it can come right up. So, I mean, you got to read between, you've got to say, well, if it doesn't do this, then what happens? That's what I'm trying to do. But I do see a scenario that this wave threads the needle and tries to get toward the United States. Are the odds good for that? No. It's more likely than not, based on what I'm looking at now and the preponderance of evidence, is that the areas right now that have to be most concerned about this hurricane would be right in this zone in here. From Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and the northern Lee, uh, Leeward Islands. This is the area right now, based on the preponderance of evidence, that have to worry most about this. However, let's again review. It, here's how it gets to the United States. There is a way, a couple of ways, two ways. Number one, this wave stays right along or south of 15 degrees north. The first trough misses it. Then it continues to move along. And the second trough either misses it or picks it up, but because it's not strong enough, leaves it behind, and then you're coming back toward the east coast of the United States and the east coast of Florida. When? It would be during this time frame with this trough coming in. That would be Tuesday, Wednesday, the 29th into the 30th. That's one way. The other way, similar in that it's a little different. It stays south of 15, first two troughs miss it, right? And then it heads up toward Florida, probably too much westerly winds for anything in the central and western Gulf. And it's very hard to get storms in October that far west. It'd be very hard. And then it tries to come like this. It could go out, could go up. So it's got a, it's got a couple of ways to get to the United States, but it's got to miss. It's got to miss at least the first trough. And the second trough isn't strong enough to pick it up and pull it out like all the other models say uh, are suggesting. And that is begins with this. It has to, to get to the United States, as we go through next week, this is 15 degrees north. It has to stay along and south of 15 degrees north. It has to stay south of there and miss the two troughs. And if it does, and those troughs, again, the review, are going to be, as we get in the, um, as we get in the Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then the second trough will be arriving when? over the weekend, probably Sunday in the Monday. So that is a week, well, 10 days from now. If it misses those two troughs or that second trough after it misses the first trough, doesn't catch it, you've got a way to get to the United States. The easiest solution is that the first trough picks it up, pulls it out, and if the first trough doesn't get it, the second was does, and that is it pulls out. So you've got a lot, a lot of of hurdles to get to this to the United States. Now, I wanted to show you this. I, I created this map, and um, it, it is complicated, but I did a little flow chart, and you can kind of see where I'm going at here. And let me put this, just to give you a, another look at this on what has to happen. So here's where the wave is now. And in the early next week, you've got this. Little no development because it's too far south. But see, here's where we are now with the wave. Here's the end game. Do we get impacts on the United States? This is yes and this is no. And you can see how easily you get no impacts. Because number one, 
this is so far south, there's too much wind shear that it just dissipates, so you get no U.S. impacts. But okay, let's say that you do, and you come up in here, it develops into the storm, you still have a chance of no impacts. You've got two chances that you have two jet streams that kick this away from the United States, and you get no U.S. impacts. But in order to get this U.S. impact at the end of the month, you have to miss not one, but two troughs, and then be guided toward the U.S. with the third trough. What seems easier in this, for, in this, in this graphic of happening? No U.S. impacts. See what I mean? That's, that's the point of the graphic. So there's a way, but the, the wave has to thread through the needle and it's got to miss two trough connections, two of them, to come toward the United States. And I will say this, right now odds are very much against that. But as, but as I mentioned earlier, um, if there were going to be impacts on the United States, if there were, um, and if it threaded the needle, I mean, I think the area that, and again, it's early, but I want to give you an idea, the area that would be um, impacted on this. The area that it seems more, if you're going to get impacts on the United States, I, I think this would be the area in here. The, the, it would be Carolina coast and, 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 and probably, probably not much west of Tallahassee. I mean, this would seem very unlikely given all these westerly winds and troughs. But this is the area, to me, if you were going to get impacts, and again, it's very small chance because you've got to thread the needle with two troughs and then get guided up to the third trough, that would be the area to keep an eye on. Florida and the East Coast. Everybody has to monitor it, but you get the idea what I'm getting at. I want to leave you with this. This is kind of a, a snapshot as we go forward. Uh, I won't be back with you until Monday. Um, this is the snapshot of what this is going to do. Don't look for any organization with this um, through the weekend. Uh, it's very unlikely. There's just, uh, it's so far south. Uh, this is a roadblock that I think it's going to overcome. When it gets into the islands early next week, Monday into Tuesday, my concern was is that if it's down here toward Trinidad and Tobago, and especially oh, you know, along the uh, north coast of Venezuela, it would be so close that it could dissipate. Now, none of the modeling suggests that's right, but that is still a possibility. And then we get to this section where the water temperatures are warm, there's a big 200 millibar high, it seems likely that this would form the, the storm. And then, see, I drew in here that you've got all these dips in the jet stream coming toward the United States beginning mid to late next week that would likely steer it. But if it misses it, it continues on that west track. And if it stays south of 15 in this area and misses those two troughs, then we can have a problem. It's a lot to go over, and I, I, I hope that made sense. But I wanted to explain to everybody the complexity of this and there is a chance of u.s impacts right now it doesn't look very uh, a very high chance it seems more than likely than not but the odds are against a u.s landfall and you would be more concerned about cuba jamaica hispaniola puerto rico and all of the uh all of the leeward islands the northern leeward islands so you can have a landfalling hurricane so those are the areas that are the most concerned. U.S. can't look, can't stop watching it now, especially that area from Florida all the way toward the Carolina coast. These storms in October can be very tricky, very tricky. Well, storms are always tricky, but again, that's the idea. I'm going to give you this, and again, let me put this on the full. You can see it again. It, you know, here it is. Here's the dips in the jet stream, and this is the idea. It goes to a hurricane in here if it gets over this hurdle, right? that if it stays far enough north and then these dips in the jet stream are to steer it north and away from the United States. But if they miss it, every trough that misses, it gets a little farther to the west and it gets a little more concerning for the United States. I hope that makes sense. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at uh, Accurano. Have a good weekend. Go Pack Go, by the way.
and I'll see you on Monday.